रोल ऑफ एम आर एस पाइन इन पॉट स्पाइन ऑथर इज डॉक्टर शुभ मार्ले एंड को ऑथर इज माई सर डॉक्टर डॉक्टर अजय वरे आई एम सेकेंड ईयर एम डी रेडियो डायग्नोसिस स्टूडेंट इन जी एम से और बात Aims and objective is the studying of the uh, MRI appearances of the TB spine to evaluate the role of MRI as an investigation modality in tuberculosis of the spine and to observe its value in uh, early diagnosis and management to evaluate the role of MRI in determining the extent of spinal tuberculosis as compared to brain radio brain radiography. The introduction: the tuberculosis of the spine is an infection by the Mycobacterium tuberculosis involving one more uh, uh, one and more components of the spine, namely the vertebra. Uh, intervertebral disc paraspinal soft tissues and epidural space the early recognition and prompt treatment are therefore necessary to minimize the residual spinal deformity or uh, permanent neurological deficit the spinal tb is the most clinically important form of the extrapulmonary tuberculosis as it may produce serious neurological sequelae due to the compression of the spinal cord as a result of disease itself as well as the resulting deformity Materials and method. Uh, the study was done uh, from 2022 to 2023 in 30 patients uh, diagnosed with the tuberculosis of the spine. The diagnosis was established on the basis of at least uh, one one of the following criteria: the histological uh, criteria, the histological histological evidence of the cassetting granuloma, the, the histological demonstration of the acid fast bacilli in the lesion, the growth of mycobacteria on the culture of the tissue, the satisfactory therapeutic response to the chemotherapy in patients with the clinical or the radiological evidence of the spinal TB. Uh, the plain radiographs and the MRI of the spine were carried out in all the patients. Uh, the MRI was done using three Tesla G16. Uh, the MRI was uh, featured where uh, MRI features were of on T1 mediated, T2 mediated, and stir and post contrast um, by gadolinium contrast and T1 sequences with the sections in the sagittal coronal and axial planes. Uh, the features on the plane radiographs and MRI were compared. Result. In my study, the 30 patients in the results were evaluated as per following parameters, the comparison of X-ray and the MR findings, the clinical features, the vertebral level, the types of vertebral lesions, uh, the, according to the clinical features, the, there are um, uh, uh, patients are classified uh, on the basis of the clinical uh, features. The, um, uh, most common fe clinical feature of the patient being uh, back pain, which is uh, around 80% of the patient. Um, second uh, being the spinal deformity, which is 46%. Uh, third being the fewer, uh, which 36%. And fourth being paraparesis and um, bowel bladder involvement. Uh, vertebral levels, the vertebral levels, most common vertebral level involved is the dorsal vertebra, um, uh, followed by the lumbar vertebra. Uh, and the uh, rear vertebra involved are the cervical vertebras and the multiple multi uh, and multiple levels as described here. Uh, the types of vertebral lesions, the most common type of lesion being the paradiscal, uh, second common being the central and uh, um, followed by the posterior elements and the anterior subligamentus. Uh, the comparison between the plane radiographs and the MRI findings of the studies we are done, uh, where the uh, plane radiographs, uh, we can see the, uh, the findings pick up in uh, this much patient and in MRI the findings were pick up in this much patient. So the level of involvement uh, as we can see here in this uh, uh, chart. Discussion. The plain radiograph features. Uh, the spread of infection is typically described as subligamentous uh, beneath the anterior longitudinal ligament, uh, usually spreading the posterior elements and often involve multiple levels. The reduction in the vertebral height is often seen in the irregularity of the anterior superior end plate due to subligamentous uh, extension. There may be some irregularity of the anterior vertebral margin. This is classical appearance with the TB spondylysis. The ivory vertebrae can result with the re ossifications. Other associated features include Gibbous deformity and vertebral plana. As, uh, as with other extrapulmonary TB, the chest film may be unrevealed in um, no pulmonary lesions seen in up to 50% of cases, with the source being the primary lung lesion that is clinically silent. The MRI features of tuberculosis of the spine are as follows. The vertical body entered involvement appears as heterogeneously enhancing entered irregularity on the post contrast sequences. The vertical lesions 
appear hyperintensive on T1 weighted images, hyperintensive on T2 weighted images, and shows heterogeneous enhancement in post contrast T1 weighted images. Uh, the marrow edema appears as hyperintense areas on T2 weighted and stir images. The intervertebral disc involvement appears hypointense on T1 weighted and hyperintense on T2 weighted images, and shows heterogeneous enhancement on post contrast T1 weighted images. The prevertebral, paravertebral, and saw abscesses appear as heterogeneous uh, lesion with peripheral enhancement and central non enhancing hypointense areas. On post contrast t weighted images. The granulation tissue appears heterogeneously enhancing soft tissue on post contrast t weighted images. Uh, here we can see the case one uh, we have the images of the images of the 44 year old male showing the hypo intense uh, uh, at the level of L3 vertebra, uh, hypointense at the level of L3 vertebral body in T1 weighted um, SAG and core sections. Uh, uh, same images appears hyperintense on T2 weighted images. Uh, <clears throat> No evidence of in, uh, pre or para vertebral abscesses is noted. Case two. Uh, case two. Uh, the, uh, here we can see the image of 75 year old female patient showing hypointense lesion involving D9 and D10 vertebrae on T1 weighted images and hyperintense on T2 weighted images. Uh, now the post contrast. Uh, T1 shows enhancing margins of the bony erosions with the enhancing granulation tissue, as we here we can see in these images. Uh, here we can see the uh, images of the 10 year old male showing the erosions of the D8 and uh, erosions of the D8 and D11 vertebral body with the waging of the disc space obliterating at the level of D10 and D11. So the prevertebral and bilateral paravertebral abscesses we can uh, we can see here. And the post contrast T1 weighted images show enhancement in the margins of the margins of the abscesses and also the margins of area of erosion of the vertebral bodies. Here we can see the case 4 where the images of the 11 year old female patient showing the kyphospoliotic, uh, kyphospoliotic deformity uh, involving, L1 and, uh, involving L1 and L2 vertebral bodies. On Hypointense areas are in the L1 and L2 vertebral bodies on T1 weighted images, same lesions appear as hyperintense on T2 weighted images. The prevertebral and paravertebral abscesses are noted. Case 4 post operative x rays. Uh, here we can see the um, post operative cases of these same patients. The case 5 being the images of the 13 year old female showing the large prevertebral collection. Uh, here we can see the collection in these in these images, large vertebral collection, uh, likely abscess. Uh, um, Hyperintense areas are uh, areas in C1, C2, and C3 vertebral body, suggestive of erosions. Uh, no erosions of any spinal cord involvement is noted. Here we can see the sparing of the spinal cord. The outcome of the study become uh, this study shows the most common clinical features is a back pain followed by the deformity with the most patient being a febrile and the most common vertebrae involved is a dorsal followed by lumbar and cervical with the sacral being the least involved. The paradiscal type of the vertebral lesions is a common than central and rarely it involves posterior elements. On comparing both of the modalities, bone uh, bone destruction is equally assessed, whereas the soft tissue involvement extent of the lesion, uh, the type of lesion and uh, uh, four disc involvement are better uh, visualized on MRI. The conclusion being it helps in early diagnosis and therefore management. The MRI offers the excellent visualization of the bone and soft tissue components of the spine uh, tuberculosis, helps to identify the disease and distress asymptomatic sites. The MRI imaging clearly demonstrates the extent of the soft tissue disease and it affects the thecal cord or foramen. Uh, 